Tara Trees addressed worshipers at the 10 o'clock morning service on Sunday, September 22, 2013. Well, it looks like a step chart like this, and we're going to fill this out together. So you should have pencils in the pew, and if you don't, I sent a basket of pens on the way down. Okay? So for those of you that, you know, sometimes tell me our um, services are a little long, this is a way to perk you up before social hour. So, um, like I mentioned, I am Tara Trees. I lead our stewardship um, committee. And I'm going to start off with asking you a question. What is the definition of insanity? And not my family up front saying it's me. So, well, because they're right there and I see that look, Jack. So, Einstein stated, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result is the definition of insanity. So this year, our stewardship committee is not doing that. You will notice a lot of changes that we've been going through. First of all, we started doing our homework. We met with many of you in the parish to ask what worked at other churches, what didn't. We've worked with Father Ron and what has worked in the past for his 20 transitions that he's done at other churches. We've read on our own. We've listened to different speakers. And the biggest thing, probably the hardest thing for me, just because I'm a program manager in my day job, is to change our mindset from being a fundraising mentality to be it's our Christian obligation to give. And we need to do that. The other things you'll notice is the communication, more emphasis on stewardship in our sermons. We've approached everyone more personally. You should have received letters from the vestry handwritten. You know, how many people do that nowadays since we're in email and texting and tweeting? We've increased our youth involvement by working with our clergy and our staff to help our children learn more about stewardship. For any of the parents in the room, you've probably um, seen me in the morning handing out the envelopes so our children can participate and they can bring their offerings up to the front. And then our speakers. We have a wide variety of speakers. Our youth, we started with Paige, talking about our Christian obligation. That was Craig last week. Um, and then the latest, I love it from Beth Ann, if you guys read it, you know, social media, Facebooking. She changed her relationship status. And lastly, today, I'm going to um, provide greater insight and transparency. I'm going to bring you behind the curtain with me today. We're going to fill this out together and share with you what we've been looking at internally within the church. So with that, we're going to start our hands-on activity. Get out your little um, step chart. This is representing 12 months of contributions from our church. It's anything that is going to the general operating fund, which the majority is our pledges. There are 832 households. So, you know, just example, the four of us and our family, one household. Until this year, now they have their own envelopes. So starting at the bottom, you're going to start seeing in this step chart our weekly giving. So recently when you got your financial statements, you probably saw a slightly different view. It's what, what's your weekly pledge, your weekly contribution? So we're trying to change our optics and representing things differently, not doing it the same. So in our first category of zero to four dollars, we have 319 families that give that per week. So if you're like a Starbucks junkie, sometimes like me, because um, I like that extra caffeine, that's the price of a venti latte. In our category of five to nine dollars, 101 households give. In our category of 10 to $19 per week, 134 households. And that's our most common pledge within this church. The next category of 20 to $29, 74 households. In our next category of 30 to $39, 58 households. This is where our average CCC pledges by week. Our next category, 40 to $49, 38 households. Probably noticing a pattern here. If my daughter were here, she'd tell you this. 
That's the average Episcopalian pledge. In the 50 to 74 dollars per week, 46 households. In the 75 to 99, 21 households. In the 100 to 149, 16 households. In the 150 to 200 dollar range, 13 households. And for those households giving more than $200 per week, 12. Now I will, you, you can kind of do the math as well, but if you start looking at just our top two categories and looking at the detail behind the scenes, those individuals give roughly 30% of the income we use to operate our church. If I draw the line at the $50 and up, that's 13% of our parish, and that gives us 60% of our income. So I am, although Father Ron is teaching us, we need to give, and we do need to give. I think we also need some job aids to help us really look deep, and that's what we're trying to do here. We have to add a little financial insight. I mean, I pray that we don't have to talk about these things, but this is the insight I'm sharing with you so that you can see what's happening within the church. So a couple of other data points, facts that we traditionally share. It's $1.6 million to run the church. Our pledges that we've received so far for 2013 are roughly 944,000 and change. That's little over half to run the church that we can depend on, that you've pledged. And we do have some 161,000 where people have not pledged, but we've received that from like the Easter offering or the Christmas offering. But once again, that's not planned. It's a gap. And in the past, we haven't really talked about the gap so openly. And I know a lot of people are sitting there going, oh, well, we received 320,000 from our endowments, the income from those endowments but we're always having to kind of scrape money, and we shouldn't have to. Fast forward and imagine a world where we didn't have to worry about that operating budget. We don't even have to talk about it. What if we could use that income for doing five more Glazer Elementaries? Or what if we could expand to the north of us and do something in Flint as well? Wouldn't that be fantastic? Really, our possibilities are endless. So, I'm asking you guys to dig deep. We have exceptional people here. I mean, all of the adults, I, I can look across the room, and everybody volunteers. And don't forget our youth. So I do have to share this last anecdote. Um, my daughter, Jordan, she participated um, when we wrote, raised money for the, uh, the Glazer Elementary School. And the Sunday school, group did a bake sale as the result of our clergy and staff, Jessica, helping and instilling that in our children. And so our family, we talk about this. This is my third year doing it, so they get to hear about it all the time. And Jordan just says to me, Mom, why don't you have a bake sale? And you can raise that money. So, you know, out of the mouths of babes. Fantastic. She is a part of the solution. She's a part of this church. So now imagine we all rally together. We're all together next Sunday, you know, RSVP, as Ron says, and look where you are on this chart. I mean, I gave you all the numbers. Where are you? Can you step up one step? Maybe forego that vente latte. I mean, I could do that. I can suck that up. I can do that. Can you go further than that? Maybe this is the motivation that you needed. So I ask you to join me and my family, Jeff, Jack, and Jordan, and the rest of our CCC family next Sunday and commit your pledge. And I look forward to stepping it up with you. Thank you.